How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Dip Discovery. Today I'm looking at the Nvidia Shield controller. This is the latest one as of the moment, which we're in 2021, the back end of it anyway. Uh, so we're going to uh, unbox it, see what we get in the box. We're also going to show you how it works with the Nvidia game stream and have a look at the minor legals that we've got with this thing. Okay, so this is the front of the box here. Quite nice packaging all around, you know, uh, gives you a nice glossy picture of it if you are picking up on the shop. Tells you that it works with the Nvidia Shield uh, TV as well as the Nvidia Shield tablet there on the side. Um, if you're still rocking one of them, this is a Bluetooth controller and also gives you, tell you what the, what's inside there as well, which is pretty much just the cable and the controller. So let's open up this thing. And there we go. Okay, so straight away you get to see the actual controller in its kind of a foam housing there, so it's not moving around while it's in transit, so it's gonna look all nice when you get it. So we'll just take that out there for a second. And um, we've also got a uh, nice uh, quality, it's not braided or anything like that, but it's a uh, USB, uh, is it micro? Yeah, I think this thing uses micro. Yeah, micro USB-C cable, and it also has a little uh, Nvidia Shield controller logo on the cable as well. So you, uh, if you are plugging it in, you know which one is for the controller there. So you get that with it. Um, you also get the Nvidia Shield support guide as well, which kind of, it's got a little different language in it, kind of tells you the, how to kind of use it, I guess, and charge it and all that kind of stuff. And you've got the quick start guide, which is the shortest guide in the world. It's just open it, turn it on. Dead simple as well. <coughs> so if you've already got an Nvidia Shield, now this is only a Bluetooth controller, but you can also use it with, you know, your Bluetooth phone or something like that, or a Bluetooth tablet if you want to do a bit of Android gaming. Um, but uh, you know, I, uh, they originally designed it to work with obviously the Nvidia Shield and it's got that Nvidia Shield uh, home button there as well right on the top which is designed to, when you press it, it loads up the uh, voice control on the Nvidia Shield. Um, so that's quite nice. Um, first impressions are feeling it in the hand. It has got this kind of geometric kind of shape, you know, to the, uh, the body, um, which to be honest, Looks quite uncomfortable when on the picture, but in the actual hand, it feels actually quite nice. It's a bit of a different feel from your usual kind of controllers. This is a, it's not rubberized or anything like that. You've got a full plastic construction here, uh, but it's a matte plastic and not a gloss plastic, um, which tends to be better if uh, for grip, as well as it doesn't um, kind of retain uh, sweat as much and all that kind of stuff. However, on the buttons here at the uh, uh, back of the shields where you've got your uh, right trigger buttons and your bumper buttons, they're uh, still using the gloss plastic there, which are actually quite slippery as well. Uh, so when your hands do get a bit sweaty and you are using those controllers, that's something to bear in mind. But they are quite wide kind of um, a trigger, so they're quite easy to grip as well. Um, it's a bit more lighter and small uh, footprint than last time, the last Nvidia Shield controller, I don't know if you've seen that. But that's, uh, it's a bit more of a, a lighter feel than that, not as quite as chunky. And it is a bit of a hybrid as well in terms of the uh, controller and button thumbstick layout going on because it's kind of like an Xbox controller in that you've got the X, Y, B, A and all that kind of stuff. And it's the general shape of it is like an Xbox controller. Um, but the PlayStation controller has got the two dual shot kind of thumbsticks there at the uh, bottom which is quite similar to that so it's a bit of a hybrid and all that kind of stuff on the bottom here we've got um, three buttons so we've got a uh, a back a forward and i've also got a, a circular button there now the circular button what that does is it kind of returns your back to the nvidia home screen from if you are using it on a shield or whatever you're kind of playing on there it also acts in um, uh, if you're using it in, in a, an xbox uh, kind of environment it'll act as the uh, uh, the home button for the Xbox um, so that's what that's for anyway but to be honest I've been playing on the Nvidia Shield and as I'm using it like that because of where it is it's quite easy to kind of not because it's such a light button as well it doesn't require much force to press um, but while you're in a game if you're using Nvidia game stream I found that sometimes I hit that button by accident and it does take me out of my game back to the Nvidia Shield home screen and then I'll have to go back into the game stream, reload the app, and it was actually quite annoying. So um, there isn't an option to disable it by default in the Nvidia Shield settings. You can only actually change around these two buttons, which is your, your select and forward button, your menu buttons, um, and you can't remap this one at the top, which is your microphone button, which I would rather them preset that to be the uh, video home button, which makes more sense because it's the uh, Nvidia logo on it. 
and then that one down there which i find is a bit of an odd kind of uh uh you know way they've set it up but there is a uh, app on the nvidia uh, shield which you can download from the google play store it's a button remapper app which kind of works with that and you can kind of tell it what you want to do stuff with anyway so if you did want to set up the, the different buttons and make them do different things while you are in the game or just in general then download that button remapper app which i'll show you on the tv here and then that's what you kind of want to be using to remap the buttons so it's not really that big of a deal it has got a vibration installed as well and the vibration quite not quite as uh, good as a uh, the uh, an xbox controller the rumble isn't quite as as good as that i'd probably say it's kind of like uh, more like uh, the earlier DualShock stuff, like a DualShock controller 2, um, like a really, you know, decent kind of mobile phone kind of vibration. <coughs> it doesn't scream like mega quality, but it does the kind of job um, uh, anyway. Um, it has got a built-in battery as well. Uh, built-in battery is rechargeable. I haven't had mine dined yet, but it's saying it'll get about eight hours worth of play time depending on how your kind of usage is and what kind of vibration you're kind of using on there what it doesn't have which i would have liked is it, it has got a little light here at the very top which is a bluetooth connection light and other than that it doesn't really do much else so once you've actually got it on and it's synced up it doesn't really do much else um, so when you plug the um a cable in to charge the thing um you have no cable charge charging indicator which would have been nice it would have been nice if that lit up as it's charging so and it goes off once it has charged then you know when it's charged or whatever or change color but it doesn't actually do that which is a bit annoying so um, the only thing that happens is when you plug it into charge it is it gives you a slight vibration to let you know that's plugged in it's charging but yeah you're gonna have to go onto the actual nvidia shield screen to see if it is fully charged or not um, other than that though the actual controller itself is really nice the buttons feel good um, they feel quite solid you know they don't feel spongy or anything like that um, don't, don't get me wrong it's nothing like the um, uh, xbox elite controller but it's on par with like a normal xbox controller i definitely would say uh, buttons feel quite you know decent well made they feel like they're gonna last not gonna break or anything like that and the bumper buttons feel nice as well as the triggers uh, but yeah if you want something that's a bit cheaper than um, you know an xbox controller what have you that you want to use exclusively with the shield and that's the definitely the way to go so it's a bluetooth controller um dead easy to sync once you've uh, the the shield will automatically know um that it's in the area once you've turned it on and it'll detect that you've got a bluetooth shield controller and you've got to press yes to accept it and then it's already synced with the thing and it works anyway so here is the NVIDIA Shield controller now hooked up to my NVIDIA Shield TV which I've got on the screen here now. Uh, the uh, controller itself, you know, while you're in the menus of the NVIDIA Shield just works just exactly like the remote. Um, you just got a few extra buttons obviously that don't really kind of uh, do much uh, like the trigger buttons while you're in the actual menu. Um, but let's load up a game and you can kind of see how it kind of uh, handles that. Um, so just go to my NVIDIA games library here. Um, and uh, you know there's no like latency or anything like that a lag or anything like that it feels quite nice so let's see what kind of a game shall i load up okay so here i am let's load up uh injustice 2 why not hit play there and um, basically it's gonna contact obviously my computer which is going to be running the game on steam and then it'll play it through there and stream it through the network um and obviously give you the game so here it is loading up the computer with it on the screen so here i have the game loaded here so you know in the menus it feels just like using the actual controller on a local machine very very quick you know there's no noticeable delay um you know between using it on a local or what have you and um, this is actually running at 4k 60 fps so uh let's uh just jump in a quick kind of game here so who should i pick um I'm going to go for Batman, why not, and player 2 AI, I guess I'll go for Superman, why not, put it on easy mode, because I suck at this game, and then we'll bring the fight to Superman at the Fortress of Solitude, yeah, why not. So, you know, you can kind of use the uh, um, joysticks or the, um, you know, the actual D-pad if you want, you know, either way, they both kind of work. And what I have noticed is, 
you know, pretty much every game that I've tried so far, the uh, the vibration motors do work because I've heard uh, it might have been on the earlier days that the vibration motor sometimes didn't work on some games. But it seems like every game I've tried, maybe it might have been the older games, but it seems like every game I've tried so far, the vibration motor has worked um, really, really well. So I've been quite impressed with that. Um, and you know what? It's it's there. It's not been spectacular, but it does the job. Um, and you know, it's it took a little tiny bit of getting used to having the uh, the dual shot, uh, not the dual shot, sorry, the joysticks. You know, in the middle instead of offset like they are on the Xbox One, because that's the controller I'm used to the most. Uh, but to be honest, it does the job really well. Now I'll show you what I mean about that annoying button. So that button there, it can really be hit dead easy. You know, so say if I was just using the joystick and my thumb kind of slipped, I'll just tap that and look what happens. I get sent back to the NVIDIA home screen. Very, very annoying. If you double tap it, it'll show you your, your open apps. And obviously the, the game is open, but when you press it, <coughs> it then loads you back into the NVIDIA game screen library, which you then have to uh, choose the game and then hit play again. So it's quite an annoying button really. So yeah, download that um, remapper but, uh, app and then you know change the allocation of that to maybe this button up here or whatever or just disable it entirely because it can be quite frustrating that thing because it has to reload the game stream game again uh, doing that. So that's pretty much it really. So I hope you enjoyed this quick unboxing and quick review of the Nvidia Shield controller. If you've got any questions, give me a shout. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video useful and there's a link in the description as well. I'll take you directly to the controller and find out where you can buy it from. Catch you on the next one.